this is the, the persistence. The best community action underneath it all is persistence. People have gone on and on, driving people bloody mad sometimes, going on and on and on. But somehow, by going on and on and being totally determined, never taking no for an answer, they've actually got somewhere. If they'd taken no for an answer, it would have fallen at the first hurdle back in 1976 or even in the public inquiry it took place in 1980. Um, Long-term commitment, fundamental. Taking risks, certainly Coin Street's done that. The, the Oxo Tower was a massive risk. Oh, that could, they, could have, they could have gone bankrupt over, over the Oxo Tower. I think what saved them, actually, was Harvey Nichols, ironically. <laughs> Harvey Nichols coming in and taking... <laughs> You know, a long-term lease of £300,000 a year, that's, that's useful, to put it mildly. A lot of community enterprises simply don't have the income stream to maintain themselves in a kind of sustainable position for long term. And if Coin Street had been located somewhere in Leeds, you know, it might not have been able to attract that kind of private sector uh, partnership. Um, so, taking a risk, particularly about... Um, Taking a risk about paying back mortgages is, 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 a, is a big one. The, the Harvey Nichols uh, yeah. motivation, was it purely the location or was there a kind of <coughs> social cachet of being associated with, with Pond Street? I think it was purely commercial. They just thought this was a fantastic site, as it is, you know, overlooking, overlooking London. But you have to have the vision to create that fantastic site, because yes. before it was just a meatpacking factory. That's right. Uh, and it wasn't attractive to Harvey Nicks, otherwise they would have gone and done the same thing anyway. That's so right. it required that, that, you know, creating the vision of saying, this could be a great place to locate something. Yes. So even if it was in Leeds, it might be creating something that could be attractive to local uh, industry yes. or wider uh, um, uh, capital. Yes. Rather than just saying, well, this capital is never going to be attractive to this location. I can't actually remember how much hunting around they did to find tenants uh, for the Oxo Tower. I can't remember how that happened. Um, I just can't remember. I need to find out. But certainly, they they did create they did create the opportunity. Coin Street created mm -hmm. the opportunity. There's no doubt about that. They saw the opportunity. Being opportunists, um, yeah, they had a vision. But they always, you know, within that, there were certain fixed points. The affordable housing was a fixed point. Um, the quality was a fixed point. But they're willing to be quite adaptable, for example, about the workshops. Um, I mean, they've changed, the workshops have gone in and out of certain uses, and so they've, they've had a museum that's closed down. And they, they've done a number of things. Not everything's been a success. They've opened up museums and galleries and various kinds of things have opened for a couple of years and they just closed. So they've had to try a number of different things. And it may be that this, this swimming pool thing is a bridge too far. I don't know. We'll see in five years' time or maybe ten years' time. But they are quite flexible. Determined, focused, but flexible. Um, and then the final point is independence. If you own land in this country, you've got independence. That's really <laughs> a fundamental fundamental part of, of, of the Coin Street uh, lesson. If the community owns land, I mean a lease of maybe 30 years or more, or a freehold, you're in business. You're taken seriously. You're taken seriously by, by banks. You're taken seriously by government. You're taken seriously by other landowners in the area, these other partners. They take Coin Street seriously because they know Coin Street owns a big slug of land. Ownership means you're taken seriously. Renting, unfortunately, means you're not taken seriously. Because you can't get a mortgage on the basis of a rent. And this is a big income stream. And that's really where Coin Street has managed to, you know, to do it. Whereas a lot of other organisations haven't. They managed to get ownership of 13 acres of land in the middle of London. You know, on the day before the GLC was abolished, the Great London Council was a was a, a radical left council that was supporting community regeneration in different parts of London. This is one of the sites where they were supporting community regeneration. You know, I was employed by them. Many other people were employed by them because GLC saw their role as trying to encourage 
community led regeneration. <coughs> they were abolished partly because the GRC were doing this kind of thing. But the day before they were abolished, they transferred this site from their ownership to Coin Street Community Builders for a million pounds. And it's worth, you know, 15 million. So that it was transferred on the day before they were abolished. Now, if that hadn't happened, Coin Street would never have happened. It simply would not have happened. That community ownership was absolutely critical. You can have all of these things, but if you don't have independence based upon ownership or resources of some kind coming in, independent resources, you're just not taken seriously by government or the banks. And this is where Coin Street have been one up on many, many others. And they're very, very lucky. So, I suppose the question for discussion is, is Coin Street a complete one-off, or just a kind of a, an accident of history, it just happened to happen? Or are there some lessons here that, you know, could actually begin to build a future for other communities? Not on their own, but actually as part of a solution to dealing with poverty and inequality. <coughs>